Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to attempt to make it easier to identify microphone cables and other such audio cables. Now, anyone who works or has worked in a studio or a live sound environment or whatever will know that you will use a lot of microphone cables for every single thing that's mic'd up. I mean, how many you could have on the drums? You could have eight microphones on the drums, for example. Uh, all the vocal mics, all the guitar cabs and everything mic'd and they all have to come back to a central point which is a stage box which all of these leads go into. Now the majority of cables are black and when you can imagine there's oh, 12 or 16 cables all going into this box here and someone's got one that isn't plugged into anything on the other end and like uh, what does this go to and then you've got to trace it down all the way that takes ages when you're in a live situation and you need to just get going again. So I've decided it's time to label these cables. I was going to number every single cable, but I have a hell of a lot of microphone cables. That was just going to be a stupid crazy amount of numbers. So I thought I'd try a different system. I've bought a couple of things from Amazon to help doing this. So I've got these coloured velcro cable ties here, which I'm going to put on the cables in a way that they will always be on to wrap them up again. But then I've bought this label printer here, with different colours of labels, like uh, yellow and green and red and blue and everything. And I've also bought some heat shrink, which uh, is the stuff you warm it up and then it shrinks down in size and that. That's to hold the labels on. I'm going to print labels, put them on the connectors, then put the heat shrink over the connector where the label is and shrink it down to keep it in place because I don't trust the sticky adhesive after them being used. I'm going to give them a colour code and sort them into lengths. So 1 to 4 metres is going to be red, for example. And then I'm going to have red 1, red 2, red 3, red 4, red 5. And that'll be the way that you can identify the cables. The label will be printed in that colour as well as this Velcro tie on there. So this is my system I've come up with so far. Alright, now as you can see in this spreadsheet, I've got cable codes here. I've worked out red 1 through 4 metre. Green, 4.1 through 8 meter. Blue, 8.1 through 12 meter. Yellow, 12.1 through 16 meter. And black, uh, nothing at the moment. They're just spares. But I've counted up the XLR cables I've got to hand. This is just one box's worth. And I've sorted them into lengths and worked out what most of my lengths are. Now, as you can see, I've not got a lot over 9.5 meters. There's, there's nothing there apart from a 15 meter one. And I've got quite a few 6 metres, but I haven't got anything until apart from 8.5 metres from there. And below 6 metres, well, there's uh, nothing apart from 1.5 really. So that's why I came up with this sorting system to do them. Now this, I think, is probably the best way of doing it, but it's subject to change, and it may well do. But let me show you the pile of cables. This is the first pile of cables that I've got out here. To go through. I've sorted them and sort of put a little note down with how long each one of them is. I've measured each one of them using a, a piece of wood with a mark on it for a metre and a mark for half a metre. And they've all fell into those categories and that's what I've got. You may notice they've also got this uh, earthing tape on them, which this is just to identify them because I very often do uh, mix my cables with other bands cables and stuff and this just helps us identify who's a who's. But these are the cables I'm going to label today, and I'm going to try one or two out now on camera, in front of you. Okay, so the first thing, I've got a 2 meter cable here. And what I've done is I've taken off the old tape and things. So I've got my green tape here, that indicates it's mine. And I've also got some old labels from, uh, it was number 5 at one point, used on a base. So, yeah, that's removed now, and the cable's just clean to itself. This is going to be a red cable, so first of all I'm going to get the red tape out of here. I'm going to put this in the label. I'm then going to get the cable tie for it, the velcro tie. I'm just going to break these black ones off. This is a pack of 50, so I've got 10 of each colour. And I'm going to want a red one. And I'm going to attach this on this end that goes at the stage box. And I'm going to thread this through. 
and tighten it all the way so as the cable tie stays on the cable but then you can also maybe not put it so far to the end you can also now wrap it around to keep the cable coiled like that so there's no need to use tape and there's no need for people to try and wrap them through the middle so there's that done the next thing is to do the label for it so I'm going to give this an ID number so let's turn this on so let's set up the label printer for 12mm tape now this cable is going to be number 1 so I'm going to print a number 1 I think three with four spaces between each one is probably a good amount, but I might be wrong. To find this out, I'm just going to print it. And chop it off. Uh, so that's kind of the size I'm looking at. If I wrap that around, it'll just about do an entire loop on the cable. So yeah, that's okay. Okay. So I've peeled the backing off this now, I'm going to fix it this way, so you're looking from the wire end to read the number. Like that. And as I say, the uh, I don't trust the adhesive on these stickers to stay on, I mean look it's lifting a little bit there. So I'm now going to try putting that heat shrink over which to melt this I'm also using a heat gun let's just pull this out to the there hoping this will fit over the connector yep so we're gonna want about that much So let's try that for size. It's not too bad. I'm going to plug in the heat gun and melt this now. The transformer is quite loud in this thing, so I apologise for that, but I guess the job done so much faster. And we'll see what the finish is like on this. Okay, so I think that's more or less fully shrunken around. Oh, the camera stops recording for some reason. But yeah, I think that's more or less fully shrunken on. You can see the uh, the label isn't going anywhere with the number on and the colour. And then if we get this together and wrap it. can see roughly how it's gonna look which I don't think that looks too bad I mean it's not the cleanest thing in the world but it's also the best way of doing it without them coming off and being able to identify them at a glance so I'm gonna try putting one on the other end now okay so I've just finished doing uh, both ends of this cable and this is sort of the finished product I guess so you can see how much clearer it is by colour plus also by the identification number so the colour gives us what length it is so this is somewhere between 1 and 4 metres a short run I've only categorised them like that because generally I class 1 through 4 metres as a short run 4 through 8 metres is sort of a reasonable length 8 through 12 is usually longer runs, that's like vocal mic runs and stuff like that out to the front. And then yellow ones, which is 12 through 16, are for really long runs for if someone wants to move out into the crowd and stuff like that. So that's my reason for choosing these particular colours. But that's kind of where I'm going and what it's going to look like. So I'm going to do a few more of these and then I'll update.
So I've now finished all of the cable labelling as you can see. I've been using them now for about 6 months and it's been brilliant. It's much quicker and easier to set up and obviously identify the ends of the cables. I've also added to the labels the lengths in metres as you can see and I've done red, green and blue ones. I've not done anything longer yet up to now but I very rarely use leads much longer than my uh, blue length. You can also see here where they're all connected up to a stage bot. This was at a festival that I did a little while ago and I was using 20 channels worth of inputs, lots of mic leads and everything was dead easy to identify and quick changeovers, not a problem. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like down below. Any questions, leave them in a comment, I'll try and answer them. If I inspired you to do something like this yourself, please do let me know. Or if you've got what you think is a better system or an alternate way of doing this, let me know about that as well, because I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching.